This is a show made for you, Tri-States. Focused on community. With local nonprofits. Reaching out to you. Providing a resource to all. This is Tri-State Impact. Hello and welcome to another edition of Tri-State Impact. I'm Bradley Preer, your host. Joining us this week on the podcast is Beth McGorry from St. Mark Youth Enrichment. Hello, Beth. Good morning. Hello, Bradley. Good morning to you too. So, Beth, it's uh, been quite the crazy year the last year and you guys have still been doing what you're doing over at St. Mark Youth Enrichment. Who are you guys uh, serving you know, we are still serving um, kids here in the Dubuque area at Fulton, Marshall, Audubon, and Lincoln schools here in town and still serving Western Dubuque with Piasta, um, Seton Catholic, and Dyersville, which is kind of crazy because it's all in a little bit different world um, for us. Typically on a normal year, we would do before and after school programs for these kiddos. Um, but you know, the pandemic changed everything. I mean, it was a year ago that we all got sent home and we didn't know how we were going to be able to take care of our kids and give them the safe space that we've always given them. And we didn't, you know, nobody knew. We thought we were gonna be home for a couple of weeks, right? And um, lo and behold, we've been home for a year. And it mean that meant that we had to really make some, some pretty big decisions on how we we're gonna serve our kids. And um, serving the kids, um, especially in the downtown Dubuque schools is really important because those kiddos are typically living in more poverty. Um, they need a little extra supplemental love from our staff. Their moms and dads are working super hard. Um, and right now, most of them are essential workers, you know, like we've got teachers, we've got grocery store workers, we've got CNAs in the nursing homes. So lots of folks who are, um, you know, at risk of lots of things and um, trying to be as supportive of our families as possible through this. And the word that nobody wants to say anymore, but it is the word, I think it's the word of 2020 and that's pivot. And that's what we chose to do and um, make sure that we stuck with our mission to um, give our kids a safe space to be in. Um, you know, and that to us meant that we were gonna go virtual in Dubuque because that was the best thing for our Dubuque kids and the best way that we could keep everybody safe in the Dubuque School District. Um, and it was super important for us to connect with our kids and it's been really impactful. Um, our families needed us and we were um, able to serve them this year. It's, it's pretty neat to, to watch all of that, but we've been doing this for over 30 years and um, taking care of kids has been our mission for 30 years and making sure that they feel safe and loved. And that never changed for us, so. Absolutely, and you touched a little bit on that mission there, Beth, and would, would you mind diving in just a little bit deeper as to what mm -hmm. that mission and the vision for St. Mark's has been from the get-go? You know, from the beginning, so we started with eight kids down at Prescott Elementary School um, when St. Mark was St. Mark Lutheran Church, and when they transitioned out of being a church, we transition, transitioned into a community center. And that mission of taking care of kids and giving them safe spaces after school, the statistics are too high for kids to, um, for there to be problems after school. Um, crime for kids um, is higher after school. We know that kids need a little bit more supplemental help with school. And what we've come to know and understand in the past 30 years is how much emotional support our kids need. Um, and that is the, when we talk about in our, in our mission statement, you know, it says building leaders for tomorrow and really we're building really great kids. So, um, and we've been doing this for 30 years, um, finding ways to help kids regulate all of their emotions because we all know that if we are crazy, angry, mad, we're not gonna be able to sit down we're not gonna be able to be nice to anybody. And we're clearly not gonna be able to learn. And um, and the studies have shown that if we can teach ourselves to self-regulate, um, we can just be better at everything. We graduate from high school. Um, we go on to post-secondary and we become really active members of our community, which is our big goal is that these kids see that they can um, do good things and have opportunities. and. Um, through the programs that we serve, we bring in lots of partners who 
really help engage our kids into seeing something outside the front door. Um, when you're talking to a kid who lives in poverty, you know, they don't really know much outside their front door to, you know, their after school spot or to their school spot or to the park they play in. Outside of that, they don't really know much. Um, we had a fifth grader during our summer program not know that the fourth um, street elevator existed. He had seen pictures of it, but he had never been there and he lives downtown. And so we, um, we get the opportunity to open their eyes just a little bit and really giving them that extra emotional support that is so, so needed um, by our kids and really making them into really good kids, good students and um, helps them. And we really talk about crazy things like breathing as basic as how do you take a deep breath so you don't have to be angry and really trying to define, are you angry or are you afraid? And so teaching our kids to identify those emotions um, which kind of sounds a little hokey, right? You know, are the emotions like, you know, is that really what is helping our kids? And the studies say that, yes, if we can learn to figure out what's going on, it means that kids can feel better. They have better self-confidence. They have all of those things that just make them feel good. And when you feel good, you have the just the capacity to learn better and um, to pay attention and to be a better friend and a better family member. No doubt about that. And uh, you talked about, you know, serving the area kids and how you do it. And things you touched earlier, too, have been quite a bit different pandemic wise. And so what has changed for you guys after the pandemic? And from what it sounds like, you guys are starting to get back to a bit of a new normal now, too. Yeah. So. You know, it's so interesting to me because we nobody knew what we were going to have to do, right? And so last year, we attempted to start with the summer program with lots of you know, potential pandemic, you know, things happen. I mean, we check temperatures every day. We, you know, we did everything we thought we were supposed to do, but we lasted about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And before just too many positive cases and really knowing that our kids were, um, every kid at that point had um, experienced trauma. And that's the deal is that when we have isolated our kids um, and our families, um, that there's so much, potential of trauma. So even if you're a child of means or a child who lives in poverty, that um, this whole experience is now, you know, embalmed in your heart. It's in your soul. Um, even as adults, we talk about, oh my gosh, how long is it going to take us to get our brain health to the place that we need it to be after this pandemic? Imagine if you're eight and imagine if your mom has to work and it's stressful, um, or your mom and dad lose their jobs because of the things that are happening. And we um, chose to go full forward and really just support our families. And so the beginnings of the pandemic meant that we got out there and we were making social emotional bags. And so we would just stick them out in our little free library and they would be gone in five to six hours sometimes. And our families knew to come and get them. We started delivering them um, to our families so that they could experience them. We were reading online every day. We were connecting with them, making more phone calls with our families that really truly connected us to them, making sure that they were okay, um, checking in on them, doing all those things. And then when the school year started, we went full virtual in Dubuque. And what that did, it was difficult, I'm not gonna lie, that it hasn't, it's, it's not been easy um, making sure that kids are on schedule, um, giving them an opportunity. But what we have found is that they need to see us every day um, and to be better little humans. And that connection has been huge. Um, we started to partner with St. Luke um, United Methodist Church and have been serving um, dropping off food boxes every week to our families. We have been dropping off bags of program items for them to use every week. And so we're actually getting to see families in their homes. And one of my um, staff members, one of my coworkers, she, um, she was telling me a story about one day when they had to drop the, the food over the fence and they walked away from the sidewalk and the family comes in and um, as mom was picking up the box and they turned around to leave, the staff member, my coworker heard, mommy, I just miss them. And we found out very quickly that we were 
as important to them as they are to us. And we often talk about them being our kids. And that need for us to be present with them is huge. And those connections that we've made, even online, uh, we get to see this little guy. He is 100% virtual with school and he is on every single call. He doesn't miss a call. And he even apologizes when he's late. And that meant that he slept in five minutes and his call is at seven o'clock in the morning. I think most of us would rather be sleeping at seven o'clock in the morning, but this young guy makes sure he gets on and really gets to know his staff and his team and um, has been really supported through this process. And we get to be part of that supplemental family for them. And we've really gotten to know our families really, really well through this pandemic for sure. Oh, I'm sure you have. And uh, Beth, anybody who has kids and you guys call them your kids, you know, mm -hmm. they know that it doesn't come free. You can't support a child on right. no financials whatsoever. You guys need, obviously, I'm sure plenty of financial mm -hmm. help. How do you guys get funded by the community? I hear you've got your virtual fundraiser coming up. Yep. You yep. guys need as much as you can get, I'm sure. You know, and it's crazy because this community does something. This, this is one of those beautiful communities in the world. And um, one of the things that we saw um, this past year was that the community stepped up for us um, and stepped up for the kids in Dubuque and Western Dubuque. Um, the first, you know, experience that we saw was with our school supplies. Um, last year, we served 3,500 kids with school supplies and raised a ton of money to make sure that that happened. And um, previous years, we had only done 2,000. So we almost doubled the number of kids. Um, the pandemic obviously made it more impactful that we needed more, right? And um, But this community decided to step up and take care of them. And that was all just through letter writing, you know, and some really good stories that ended up in the newspaper and on local news stations and really spreading the word of this really important need of starting school. And, you know, at that point, we didn't even know when school was going to start and how kids were going to, you know, see all their school supplies. But knowing that they've made them into the hands of our kids is really important for us. And we we do several fundraisers in the year, but most nonprofits do these huge galas, you know, where we used to have beautiful dinners and everyone gets dressed up and dolled up and, you know, we all get put on pretty dresses and men wear suits and ties and we have these long dinners, you know, with lots of auction items and we raise funds for our families and um, the pandemic changed all of that. And so last year we did our first annual virtual fundraiser and it went well it's, you know, did what it was supposed to do. And um, it was one of the first in the community, um, first groupings of us that attempted to go through and uh, really try, um, which was a little scary, but it also shows us that we're kind of, you know, we have some resources and we work really hard to um, connect with the right resources and make sure things happen. And this year we're gonna go 100% virtual as well. It's just not safe enough in May for us to be able to um, get together. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a long time till we can feel comfortable putting 200 people in a room together. And um, these virtual events turn into a show. I mean, I I'm talking to some producers right now, like this is what it turned into. And I think that this year, the impact is so much bigger. Um, we now know, um, you know, it's in every news, you know, reel across the country of, the brain health of our kids and how the impact of the pandemic has been on them. And, um, and that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna take care of these kids. And um, through our after school and before school programs when we get to go back into the classroom um, in the fall um, while we're supporting also um, in person in Western Dubuque. Um, but this summer program that we're gonna put on this year is we're so excited because we're um, our team will be um, vaccinated, um, which has really um, been a great source of um, relief, I think, for our teams and for our families. They know that their kiddos are going to be safe and um, we're going to make them feel as safe as possible. Um, our families want summer program more than anything. They know um, our returning families signed up and I, I'm pretty sure we were halfway full in less than three days. 
of um, program, which is pretty crazy, but our families know the impact and the good things that can come out of being at program. And it's being outside, it's working on those, um, the gap things that they've missed, whether they're academic, but even talking about that emotional level. Um, we know that with trauma, it means that kids act out a little bit differently and um, we've been preparing for that. And we know that that's what we do. It's what we do really, really well. Um, if anyone ever asked us, um, asked me what the thing that we do that's different than everybody else is that is our focus, is the social emotional well-being of our kids. And we do that extremely well. It's our, it's our, you know, the thing that is the best about us. And we carry that through our office. So it's one of those things that is part of our core and um, making sure the emotional well-being of our people is really important. And um, Legacy, which is our virtual event this year, um, it's going to support summer program. It's going to support these kids who need another adult. You know, it, we really found out this year that um, I can put it into like tangibles that um, we would often have to tell folks that we needed to buy curriculum to help kids learn better. Well, it is very, very clear to me now that people change children, not curriculum. And so as much curriculum as we can throw at someone doesn't mean that that's going to change a child's life, but that connection and that personal connection with those kids, that's how this is going to help. And that's how this is going to change. And that's what we're really good at. And our families are looking forward to that. And I think the community is looking forward to seeing those changes for our kids and that support that we can offer them. And super excited to do this virtual event. It means that I'm gonna be clear, it makes my life less stressful. Um, you know, I don't have to worry about what we're having for dinner. I just get to tell our stories and I get to invite kids, but invite families and, you know, folks in this community to fall in love with our kids and um, show them that they need their support more than ever this year. No doubt, Beth. And uh, if we can just kind of, in closing, talk about your hero summer academy i think you briefly touched on it when it is yeah. how people sign up for your remaining spots and yeah. what you guys are looking to do for that oh my gosh so this is my favorite time of the year because it is on campus so we bring them to us we partner with saint john's episcopal church saint luke's um united methodist church the boys and girls club down the street from us to house kindergarten so incoming kindergartners to incoming fifth graders and so if your child is coming into kindergarten, it's a great place to start. Um, we get to work on, you know, those basics of how to be a good kid. Um, but then they get all of the academic stuff involved with that. And so um, whether it's learning letters in kindergarten or writing books as fifth graders and really giving them the experiences. I remember, um, you know, just I was an avid reader when I was little. Um, I come from a reading family, which meant that if I went to go ride my bike, um, I and then and I felt the wind in my hair. Um, I then went to go read about a child riding a bike and feeling the wind in their hair. I knew I knew how that felt, right? Um, so we are working on giving those kids experiences, um, whether that's at Four Mounds at the ropes course, whether it's creek stomping out at Swiss Valley. Um, running through trees out at Cincinnati Mounds. Like there are experiences for those kids to be outside, which is so good for their souls and giving them opportunity to run. Um, running and running and running and sweating every day is super important to their well being and who knew, right? So we do lots of those um, feelings. And so, and then on top of it, you're doing all the regular academics. This year we have um, a STEAM program which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And every week they're gonna focus on a new, um, new topic and that's super exciting. And that's for third graders through fifth graders. And it's just a great experience. There is cost, um, but we do offer scholarships, which is amazing to so many of our families. This year, we're gonna need more scholarships for our families. Um, but every week there's a new theme, which we partner with, um, with the, um, Carnegie Stout Library and so and it's the colors that change your world and so really is that's our theme of making sure that our kids are experiencing Dubuque and seeing things that are beyond their front their front doorstep and so um, I love this because on a bad day 
I get to go hang out with some kindergartners who always bring joy and on a stressful day and I can hear them giggling as they walk down the street. And if you walk down and drive down Dubuque and you see a bunch of little kids walking around in rainbow colored t-shirts, those are our kids. And sitting on trolleys, taking you know trips and um, exploring this town, which they love, they love their field trips. Um, it makes it really fun for those kids. And it doesn't feel like they're doing a lot of learning. They don't feel it, we see it. Um, we see it every day. And when they go back to school, our teachers just love to know that um, their kiddos had been at St. Mark program that summer. And so um, it's, it's really important for the kids. You know, on normal years, we would talk about the summer slide where kids would lose months of um, academics. Well, right now we're trying to fix a year of academics. And so trying to get kids back up to where they need to be and um, giving them some opportunity to grow and you know heal those little hearts. So I'm super excited. And that starts, um, we start that up um, June, like the second or third week of June. And it'll go um, through the end of July. So it's five weeks, a lot of fun, great times and kids learn and mom and dad might even get a break if they're working from home. It's like, we start at eight o'clock in the morning and we finish at 1230, they get breakfast and lunch with us, and then they get to move on for the rest of their day. So it's super fun. No doubt, Beth. And for those interested in learning more about you guys, where do they go to find uh, St. Mark Youth Enrichment? You know, it's as easy as stmarkyouthenrichment.org. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. We're there um, sharing our stories and with our contacts. Um, and so it's a real, it's super easy if you can remember that it's just ST Mark Youth Enrichment. Dot org, then you'll find us and you'll see lots of great faces on those front pages and um, seeing lots of good smiles of kids who really are enjoying themselves and um, learning at the same time. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Beth. We look forward to seeing you again here soon, hopefully. Thanks, Bradley. And don't forget to join us next week for the next episode of Tri-State Impact featuring Dubuque County Sheriff Joe Kennedy on MC22, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcast. I'm Bradley Preer. This has been Tri-State Impact.